Hi, kitty cats. Let's go. Good morning. It's a beautiful September day here in Vermont, and as you can perhaps hear behind me, Charles is back in action working on the drawer and cabinet fronts for the kitchen and bathroom. In addition to getting some work done on the project today, we are planning to answer a few of the questions that we've had on the channel over the last few weeks and months. There was enough noise coming from the yurt that I brought you down to the trail cameras to answer our first question. If a poisonous snake were to bite you, or an accident happened to you, how quickly could you get to a hospital or get help to you? Okay, let's start with the venomous snakes. The short answer is we have none in our area, so that's not something that we need to worry about. About having an accident, that could easily happen on our property. It is true that we are further away from emergency services than we were when we lived in the city. And that is one of the costs of living in a place like this. But when you see our drone shots of the property, it looks so remote, right? It looks like we are in the middle of nowhere. And the truth is, it's very forested and it is kind of rural, but we are not that far from several fire stations. I would say we're about three miles from one fire station and maybe four or five miles from another. So if we had a fire, we would probably have a fire engine here in about, I'm guessing, 15 minutes. So not as quick as in the city, perhaps, but still, we're, we're not that remote. We could get to our nearest medical clinic in probably less than 10 minutes. We could get to a small hospital in about 25 minutes and a larger hospital in about 45 minutes. Honestly, the larger question for us is how to remain insured with my seasonal and part-time income fluctuating. So that's another whole story and probably not something that everyone is interested in the nitty-gritty details of. So here Charles is dry fitting the little tiny countertop that needs to go over the washer dryer. He's going to put those boards together and plane them to make them smoother. And this is the solution to the fact that our washer dryer is a bit larger than the one we originally picked out. So it turned out that the smaller version of this machine would have washed and dried only very small loads of laundry. So Charles, are we planning to grow our own food? Are we planning to grow our own food? So Charles in the past has had chickens and bees and mm, yeah. we chose the site of this property specifically because it was a south facing slope, partly for the solar array, but also for the purpose of a longer growing season. But our plans took a twist when we decided to buy an RV to live in. And now we're kind of interested in the idea of traveling and we're going to try that out. And before we decide about gardens, we'll see how much we like traveling. We can get fruit trees planted, which I would really like to do this fall, but I'm not sure it's gonna happen. If we do plant fruit trees, we will need to somehow protect them from the deer because deer are kind of overpopulated in our area and they tend to damage the forest even by eating all of the newly sprouting trees. So we'd have to plant the fruit trees and then put little fences around them.
What do we do with our trash? Our trash? Our trash and our recycling. Well, we take it to town. To the transfer station, recycle center. Um, recycling for residents here is free. And it costs us like $2 for a 13 gallon trash bag. Back when Charles first arrived, he did set up a bear resistant trash can. And so far, the bears have not gotten into it. We also have tried not to put any smelly trash in there if we can avoid it. But it's also not that easy for us to get into, so <laughs> it's maybe not the most perfect bear resistant trash can solution. We don't make a whole lot of trash. We can save it up for five weeks easily. Could an angry bear break the walls of our yurt? Well, the, <laughs> the bear would not need to be angry. It would only need to be hungry. And yes, if a hungry bear decided that there might be food in the yurt, it could break through the yurt. We have seen YouTube videos of bears having broken into yurts, so it's really not that difficult for them. However, it's a problem bear that would break into a yurt when it's used to getting food scraps in the trash. So how do we try to minimize the chance of a bear getting into the yurt? Well, right now there's no food in the yurt. Once we put the railing around the deck, I will put up a electric wire around the base of the outside base of the railing as well. So if the bear tried to come in or tried to climb up to the deck or something and hit the wire and shock itself and hopefully that'd keep it away. But that's my plan to keep bears away from the yurt is just to put a, an electric fence around it. So historically in our area there is a bear hunting season which tends to keep them very wary and we have not had any bears that were particularly interested in hanging around here which is good but the entire community needs to be careful of how they deal with their trash and also uh, bird feeders are a problem it's technically illegal here to have bird feeders up outside the winter season when bears are asleep and the third common bear attractant is backyard chickens, which need to be protected behind electric fencing. And what happened with our neighbor's well? Last we talked about it, they had drilled down to 600 feet and had not really found water yet. Well, they ended up going down to 800 feet and also having the well fracked, which is fracturing the, the rock down there to try to get more water flow into it. And they ended up getting approximately a gallon per minute, which is not great. And their static level is 450 to 500 feet down. That has been fluctuating, and so Fluctuates they, a bit. they still need to figure out how much pump they need to be able to use their water. We are very happy so far with our rainwater collection system, and that leads into our next question. How are we going to keep the pipes from freezing under the yurt? Not just under the ground, where they're insulated by foam board insulation and dirt on top of that, but where they have to travel up into the yurt. There'll be a room underneath all the plumbing under the yurt. It'll be insulated and the supply lines and like the P-traps will all have uh, heat tape wrapped around them. The biggest question seems to be when are we moving into the yurt? And the short answer is, we're not in a crazy hurry to move into the yurt because it's still a construction zone and we're perfectly comfortable in the RV. To be honest, the answer to that question 
is actually the answer to another question, which is, what are we doing this winter? We've sold our wood stove and the yurt. We've not yet completed the rocket mass heater. And we've disassembled our mud room that we built for the RV last year. And most importantly, I have not committed to a winter job. So we're going to travel this winter. As soon as it starts freezing hard here and the water system becomes difficult to deal with, we will travel south, spend some time with Charles's mom and stepdad in Missouri. Some of you might remember that we had an interview a few months ago for a work camping position, and that worked out. So this winter we are going to a wildlife refuge in southwestern Arizona. We will be counting the number of um, boondockers who are camping off-grid in the wildlife refuge, just keeping an eye on the place. But it's not a typical camp host position because it's not a developed campground. So even we as the volunteers are not going to have hookups, which is not normal for a work camping situation. Usually you work in exchange for your camping spot, which typically comes with electrical hookups, sewer hookups, that sort of thing, uh, water, running water. But in this situation, we were recruited partly because of our experience of living off-grid. We're pretty equipped to do that. We've got our solar panels on the RV now, and they will supply propane as our backup fuel. They'll supply a big tank of water that we'll need to filter it to be able to use it, but we're used to doing that anyway and they'll have a porta potty for us, which will probably be the biggest logistical challenge is not being able to um, empty our black water tank very often. At the wildlife refuge, they have wildlife drinking stations. And one of the primary responsibilities of the volunteers is to make sure those are operational. And I will have an opportunity to do some videography for the wildlife refuge in addition to getting permission to continue making our videos, which would normally be difficult on federal land because of some strange outdated laws. There's a possibility that I will be able to help convert uh, wind-powered well pumps at wildlife watering stations to solar. They want to go from wind to solar. And that was kind of an exciting thing for me to have the possibility to do. We'll see if that materializes, but other things will be uh, hiking out and checking the watering stations, probably repairing if need be, um, general maintenance on the refuge, sign maintenance, um, whatever really needs to be done. Well, thanks everyone for your questions, and we'll see you again soon. Till next time. But aside from that, we actually know enough about snakes and their behavior that we're not particularly concerned about that, even if we did have venomous snakes in our area. It might be a concern for someone with dogs um, who, or maybe indoor outdoor cats that don't know how to behave around snakes. But the truth is that the best way to get bit by a venomous snake is to mess with it or uh, to accidentally stick your hand or foot in a place where the snake happens to be hiding. 
So if you make it a practice to look before you step and look before you put your hands in a crevice, that should help a lot even in areas where there are venomous snakes. It also helps to know the difference between venomous and non-venomous snakes because many, many, many snakes, including all of the ones on our property, are completely harmless to humans.